Hello and welcome to Skizzer Automation. My name is Ash and today we are going to look at how to pass dictionaries and dynamic arrays as parameters through a function. Why is this useful? Well, the biggest benefit would be to make your code more manageable. In fact, let me show you. This is our current code. For now, we don't need to get into what this code is doing. Just note this. We load up two dictionaries at the start, one and two. Then we create a dynamic array based on both the dictionaries. Later, do some cleanup and finally output the array onto the worksheet. This code is solid, but that's not the issue. The problem is that there are a lot of lines all in one place. Honestly, if I see continuous lines of text one below the other, my brain switches off and it becomes difficult to track the flow of logic from the start right through till the end. But what if I say that we can make this look so much better with the help of functions? In fact, Today we are going to check out how to convert these monotonous lines of code into this compact and cool looking block of code. Here we can follow exactly what's going on. We don't need to scroll down anymore. It's easy on the eyes. Yes, the code has been transferred into functions. And yes, we have shifted all the logic into a supporting module out here. But the whole trick lies in how we've shifted our code. If you notice closely, we are initializing and loading both our dictionaries within the first two steps of functions. But we aren't consuming them until the third function down here. I'm going to repeat this point because that's the highlight of this video. We are initializing and consuming the same dictionary in two separate functions. The first two functions output a dictionary each. The third function takes both these dictionaries as parameters and returns an array. And the last sub procedure out here takes in the array and outputs its contents onto the Excel worksheet. And this is what we are going to learn today. How to move or pass data in the form of dictionaries and arrays from one function to another, thereby making our overall code more portable and manageable. Needless to say, a prerequisite for today's video is that you have a basic understanding of dynamic arrays and dictionaries. I have startup videos on both topics. Please check them out if you want to do a brush up. First, let's look at our initial code. Alt F11. Okay, so we won't be building this out from scratch, but it's kind of good to understand what exactly we're trying to do. Otherwise, we'll land up speaking in hypotheticals for the rest of the video. So back to our worksheet. This is our main data set of invoices per store. Store name is in column C and amount in column E. And one store can have multiple invoices. We have a store name to salesperson map in the mapping sheet. Our objective is to create a summary of this main report with the total amounts per store and display the salesperson for each store. Our final report will look like this. Let's go back to our code. In this first step, we load up the data from the mapping sheet into a dynamic array and create a map dictionary based off it. It will have the store name as the key and the salesperson as the item. In the next step, we will load the main data set into a dynamic array and create a store dictionary based off it. This dictionary will have the store name as the key and the total amount as the item. So we just keep doing a cumulative sum of amounts per store. We then create an output array, which will hold the final report. It consists of three columns. Column one will be the store name, which is the key of the store dictionary. Column two will be the salesperson, which is the item of the mapping dictionary with the store name as key. And column three will be the total amount, which is the item of the store dictionary. And in the next step, we'll just clear off the data and add in the headers for the final report. And in the last step, we'll offload the data from the array into the output sheet. Okay, I'm going to say this. We don't need to worry about how we construct this code for our video today. We are not going to change any of this coding logic. All we are going to do today is transfer it into different subs and functions. Let's just run this macro once to confirm that everything is working. It is great. Let's move on to building our functions. In this section, we'll check out how to transfer all the code from this initial macro into separate functions. Let's create another module to hold the supporting code for our functions. Okay, first let's clarify the difference between a sub procedure and a function. A function returns a value 
while a sub procedure does not. Let's look at this first step. We want to load up a dictionary which we will use later on in the parent sub. Hence, we need to create a function. It will be used to look up the salesperson based on the store name. Let's give the function a name and we want to return a dictionary which is an object. And note, we are using lead binding here. We're going to need some variables to use later on. And let's go back to our main sub. We are just going to copy this entire block of code, cut and paste it into our function. And let's assign this dictionary back to our function. Since we have set the function to return an object, we need to use the word set. That's it for our function. This dictionary or rather this function now needs to be made available in our parent macro. We will assign the dictionary returned by the function to an object variable. So we'll set it to equal the function name. And since this is the first function that we are constructing, let's test it out to see whether everything is working. So we'll just display one item. This piece of code should return us the salesperson associated with this store. I'll just put a code break here and play the sub. Great. So everything is working so far. Moving on. We are going to repeat this same logic for this dictionary as well. So back to our supporting code module, make some space here, create a function, add in some variables, cut the code from the second step, paste it down below and assign the dictionary back to our function. Let's call it from the main sub. Fantastic. Now that we have our two dictionaries, we are ready to populate our array with unique stores, unique salesperson and the total amount. So we need to create a function which will return an array as a variant. Go back to our supporting code module, make some space, create a function. This is a variant because we don't want to restrict the output to only strings and numbers. Now, the data source to construct the array are the two dictionaries that we populated earlier. So let's pass them as parameters into this function. And a quick side note, byref can alter the value of the parameter while byval can't. Neither case affects us, so we will stick to the default, which is byref. Okay, so let's declare an iteration variable, go back to our main sub, cut out the code, paste it in, and return the array back into the function. So the output of this function is an array. Let's now extract it from within our parent sub. And we will need to pass in the two dictionaries, the store dictionary, and the mapping dictionary. Great. Next, let's move up this cleanup code into a separate sub procedure. Come back to our supporting module, create a sub. This time we're just performing an action. So we're creating a sub since we're not returning any value. Come back to our main sub, cut out the code and paste it in. And let's call this sub from our parent macro. And finally, we'll transfer this output logic for the array into a separate sub procedure. So the sub needs to take in the output array so that it can paste out the contents onto the Excel worksheet. Let's fill in the array and cut and paste the code. And let's call this sub from the parent macro. I'm just really lazy. I just like to do copy and paste. But copy and pasting ensures that there's no spelling mistake. So that kind of avoids bugs in the long run. And that's it for the code. Let's run this macro. Oh. I just gave a whole spiel about the benefits of copying and pasting code and ironically, I forgot the P. Okay, let's stop and run the macro again. Okay, so that ran well. The result is the same, but that's not what we are testing. A successful run indicates that we have created all these functions and subs correctly. All right, so we have successfully transformed the previously long single block of monotonous code into several pieces of portable code with the help of functions. And that's it for this video. If you want to see more videos on arrays and dictionaries, please let me know in the comments below. All right, see you in the next video.